Hello, Wedding Wanderers. My name is Assumpta and welcome to another episode of Ave Creations TV, a home for busy professionals and entrepreneurs who want to plan a timeless, sophisticated and unforgettable wedding celebration or special event. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we are talking about who to invite to your wedding. Decisions, decisions. So if you're looking for a little guidance, then stick around and watch the rest of the video. Your guest list, or the number of people that you choose to invite to your wedding, is the single biggest factor that can affect the cost of your wedding, because it has a knock-on effect on everything. And I truly mean everything. Well, almost. From the size of the venue, to the number of tables, decor, and the specific number of mouths to feed, the number of people you choose to invite to your wedding, as I said, can affect it all. Depending on the kind of wedding you're having and who's paying for it, of course, the number of guests you choose to invite can vary wildly. If you're watching during the pandemic, then as you know, there are restrictions on the number of guests that you can invite. So this video might be super helpful, but if you're watching at a time when we are allowed to invite as many people as you want, then it will also help you to decide whether you want to cut your numbers dramatically or maybe you're just having a free-for-all and want to weed out a few people. Watch it anyway, you never know how it might help in your decision making. I thought I would share some guidance because all of the things that I have read or heard surrounding this topic are always super Eurocentric and I knew they didn't really apply to me wholeheartedly when I was planning my wedding so I just wanted to give a few different takes on the matter I hope that you find them helpful. The first category of people that you need to remember to invite, drum roll please, yourselves. You'd be amazed at the number of people that actually forget to write themselves down on the list. And depending on the kind of wedding you're having, that can mean an extra 100 pounds or 500 pounds per head. You just never know. So you need to make sure you include you and your fiance in the guest list. You're going to be seated in the room and you're going to need to be fed. So don't forget to put yourselves on the list. Next on that list, you want to think about your nuclear family. And by that, I mean your parents and your siblings. If you're talking to them, that is, because it's not always a given at any stage in life. I was about to say nowadays, but even back in the day, families fell out. If you are still talking to your parents or if they're still alive, then you want to write them down on the list. If they are separated and have new partners, you want to decide if you're going to be inviting their new spouses along, if you get along with them. Similarly with your siblings, if they're not married to their partners, are you inviting them too? If they've been with their partner for many years, I would highly advise that you invite them, even if they're not married. Having said that, if they've only been together a short amount of time, you might want to think twice before you give them that plus one. But more about that later in the video. Once you've addressed your nuclear family, it's time to move on to your wider family and still within the realms of those you're close to. I'm talking aunties, uncles, cousins, people like that. If you are African or Asian or from a Mediterranean family, basically family centric or family oriented cultures, you tend to have a lot of cousins, probably a lot of aunties that you may not necessarily be biologically related to, but I'm from a Nigerian background and we have to call people that are older than us auntie and uncle and they may have been people that you've just known your whole life. Those people get an invite. Having said that, it may mean that you need to invite aunties and uncles that you're not necessarily close to. Particularly if your parents are paying for the wedding or contributing some money, they might have a say in who gets to come. It can be a bit controversial and I'm, as I said, the advice that I've read before is normally super Eurocentric and it assumes that you have autonomy in this decision making. It is not the case for all of us. I know I didn't. We had people at our wedding that were friends of my parents and even though I knew them, I can't say I was particularly close to them, but my parents are close to them. Therefore, they were allowed to come to the wedding. That's not the case for everyone, but I just want you to be aware that this is the case for some. And if that applies to you, you want to sit down and really think about how many guests that your parents are allowed to invite or who fall into that auntie and uncle category that aren't necessarily a close family friend or relative, but you know that they have to be there. 
Some of them you may need to put into a category that's a maybe and you'll have to have discussions with your families to decide whether or not they make the cut. But again, more about that later. Let's just deal with the core people first. So we've got yourselves so far, your parents and your siblings, then your close relatives, aunties, uncles and cousins who you speak to actively. Next, we have children. This one can get quite controversial. Some people choose to have child-free weddings. Other people choose to have all the children at their weddings. One of the reasons why we personally and some of my clients have chosen to have child-free weddings is because there are so many children in the family or with their friends that it would double the number of guests that they would need to have, particularly if these children aren't tiny and require a seat and a meal. They add to your costs and your numbers. So you have to take them into consideration. Not just that, bored kids at a wedding break my heart. <laughs> it's fine if there are lots of them and maybe they can play together, but oftentimes there's no nothing available for them. There are some fantastic child services for weddings and events that you can hire to entertain them. Or even if you just decide to have activity packs for them to play with, just so that they're entertained while the adults are having fun. If you decide not to have children at your wedding, as I said, it can cut down your numbers significantly. But a lot of people I know worry about offending the parents. You'd be amazed. Some parents don't get offended. They're happy to have a night off. Maybe they can arrange childcare. They can let their hair down and have a good time knowing that they don't have to be worried about what the children are doing. Where it gets a little bit complicated could be when you have a couple of children at the wedding. We only had three at our wedding or was it four? Two of them were too small to need a seat and two of them were our, our page boy and our flower girl. The flower girl is my husband's cousin and the page boy is my cousin. We just happened to have two very young cousins that were the same age and they had to be at our wedding. We wouldn't have wanted it any other way. So they were the only children that were really allowed to come and we politely wrote on our invitation and also verbally told our friends and family that younger children were not allowed. Next up, friends. Some people have friends that are as close as family, if not closer. So you could move that up on the list if you want. I'm just trying to keep an order here. You don't have to invite every single friend that you have or acquaintance, I should say. Depends on your definition of the word friend. I would define it as somebody that you're super close to. Acquaintances that you maybe meet on a night out or friends of friends don't necessarily need to get an invite to your wedding. And I think they would understand unless you're having a massive wedding that you can just invite anybody to. But if you need to be selective about your numbers, I would really try and qualify who you consider to be a friend. If there are people that you've known since you were younger and haven't necessarily spoken to in recent years, you don't necessarily need to invite them. Something I used when planning my own wedding and also advising my clients is break down your per head costs. If you wouldn't spend that money on this person on a night out or maybe going to dinner or you wouldn't hand them that cash, they probably shouldn't be at your wedding. If you know that you're not going to actively speak to them in future, don't send them an invite. If you don't talk all the time now, it's unlikely they'll be offended. And if they are, maybe they're not your friend to begin with because they should be understanding of the situation. Another category of friends to consider People who have invited you to their weddings and special events, maybe a few years ago now, and you're not as close as you once were. You might wanna reconsider inviting them to your wedding. Just because they invited you to theirs does not mean you have to invite them to yours. In my situation, I was maid of honor for a friend in the past and also a bridesmaid for another friend. Over the years, we haven't been as close as we once were. I didn't even let them know when I got engaged. So it stands to reason that I didn't invite them to my wedding. It just doesn't make sense if you know you're not going to continue the relationship going forwards. Everybody has their own different definitions, but I hope this helps and it's just something for you to think about. The next on the list is parents' friends. I kind of touched on it a little bit earlier in the video, but I'm gonna be quite specific with it now. If your parents are paying for your wedding or contributing a large amount to your wedding, if you're African, or specifically Nigerian like I am, or you're from an Asian or Mediterranean background, oftentimes you know that your parents' friends are going to be invited to your wedding, even if they're not paying. It's just our custom. But 
if you are working with restricted numbers, you might want to sit down and have a frank conversation with your parents, particularly if they're not paying, and explain that you want the room to be filled with mostly your close friends and your close family. The beauty of the pandemic right now means you don't actually have the luxury of being able to invite the whole village, proverbial village. So use that to your advantage. And in the future, when we are able to invite more people, I'd say you still want to be quite particular about who you have there within reason and while respecting your cultural norms, if that is a consideration for you, like it was for me. I did have to discuss with my parents and thankfully they were super understanding and we still had a huge number of people, but it could have quite easily been 600 people at my wedding had we not had that conversation. And as I said right at the beginning of the video, you have to be mindful of the fact that the number of guests you have at your wedding directly affect your costs. If your parents or friends want to add just a few more people, those just a few more heads and bodies require an extra table possibly, which requires an extra tablecloth, which requires an extra centerpiece or decor, maybe even a larger size venue. These are the things that you really need to consider. My final category for you to think about are plus ones. Do you or don't you want to give your guests plus ones? This subcategory of people, like children, can get quite controversial. If you have a friend that is possibly not linked to any of your other friends, then you might want to give them a plus one because they won't know anybody else at the wedding. Or what you could do is group all of your friends, maybe the ones that you're not allowing their partners to come, on a table together, people that you know that are friendly so that anybody attending alone won't feel so left out. At my own wedding, I didn't allow plus ones unless you were engaged or married. So it was only fiancés and spouses that were allowed. It was just the easiest way of cutting down the numbers without offending to a degree. And some of my friends were in long-term relationships and had been for years, but I did explain to them the situation and they were super understanding about it. Not everyone will be, but you have to decide your own threshold. If you are able to accommodate plus ones, particularly for people who won't know anybody else there, then that's fantastic. But if you really are in a pinch and trying to cut down your numbers, then you might want to consider not including plus ones. Bonus category for you, forgot to mention it earlier, colleagues. Colleagues are another subsect that you need to think about. If you have been working at your workplace for years or maybe even over a year, or you got engaged while working there and made a song and dance about it, you may want to consider inviting your colleagues. Having said that, it may be easier for you to invite no colleagues rather than just one or two people in the office and offend everybody in your team. Swings and roundabouts here, you have to decide what works for you. If it's a new workplace, you'll be forgiven for not inviting your colleagues. But if you have been there for some time and you're not super close to one person in particular and maybe you're close to a group, if you have the capacity, I'd say invite them, especially if you plan on working there for the next couple of years. But if you don't have the capacity and you are just close to maybe one or two people, I'm sure the rest of your team will be super understanding. Do not feel that you have to invite all of your colleagues if you're not close to them or you don't plan on being there that long or if you got engaged before you got there. I don't think any reasonable person would expect that you must invite them. If you make a new friend at work or outside of work and you see yourselves getting really, really close and you think that you would really love to have them at your wedding, invite them. Life's too short for if, buts and maybes. And if later down the line, you do get as close as you think you're going to, you might regret not having them at your wedding. I hope these considerations have helped. Sorry, it's been a little bit rambly. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and also tell me if I've missed anything out or if you'll be inviting children to your wedding or colleagues or acquaintances, I would really, really love to know. So let me know down below and I will catch you in my video tomorrow. Because it's Vlogmas and although due to the pandemic, I'm not necessarily vlogging, but I am going to be sharing videos every day for the next 12 days. So make sure you head back here. If you're not subscribed, then subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you're always kept up to date when I upload a new video. And before I forget, 
Alve Creations TV is one years old. Yay, we made it. <laughs> Hitting my plant there. We turned one yesterday by we, I mean me and the channel. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everybody who's stuck with me over the past year. Thank you for interacting with me, for sending me messages. I will, I hope I continue to churn out helpful content for you all. At some point I need to think about some sort of celebration because it's no small feat to, to have stuck with this for one year. But I just wanted to express my gratitude to you all and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Bye.